Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel a bit earlier than I had anticipated. First off, thanks a lot for the great response on my latest video. It seems many of you were glad that I explained some of the more complex inner workings of this crash in a way that is simple and rather easy to grasp. However, after I posted my video here on YouTube and later on also on Reddit, a user called Admiral Cloudberg pointed out that I made some crucial mistakes during my explanation and that many explanation videos got this accident backwards. So I went back to the final report and lo and behold, he was right. There are some parts of the accident I explained incorrectly. Therefore, I intend to fix this mistake and use this video to explain what really happened to Fly Dubai 981. Again. If you haven't watched it yet, watch the original video first, otherwise this video won't make much sense, probably. The link is popping up in the top right corner right now, and also you can find it in the description. Now let's get into it, again. Welcome to Airspace. First off, let me explain why I got some of the things wrong. Usually when I make a video on an accident, I have already heard about the accident and gotten a basic idea on the inner workings beforehand. That's what sparks my interest in the first place in making a video to present to you guys. Afterwards, I dig up the final report and refine my knowledge on it before producing the respective video. For this accident, I had no idea how it happened and I had to go through the entire final report, which was originally issued in Russian. The translation to English is okay, but far from perfect, and the style of writing is rather mind-numbing, so I must have read over a crucial detail that was hidden between the pages 160 to 170 of the 175 page long report. Anyway, enough excuses, let's get into what happened to Fly Dubai 981. Let's go to the point in time where the crew performed their second go-around. I stated that the crew applied the go-around procedure incorrectly, and that is partially true. In fact, a go-around should be performed with a reduced thrust setting, considering the low weight of the plane. However, it is of course absolutely fine to go around with full power, if one anticipates a strong pitch-up moment that comes with such a maneuver. Here lies the first thing I missed that the committee noted. Apparently, they concluded that the commander was not mentally ready for a second go-around, and therefore found himself overloaded by the task, and overwhelmed by the large control column input required to keep the plane at the correct angle for the go-around. This is evident from the fact that he had difficulties in maintaining the appropriate pitch angle, a rather menial task to perform normally. But the crucial thing I missed is this. The crew did not crash because the captain encountered a somatographic illusion. The board mentioned that it might have contributed at some stage of the accident, but the accident is not solely a consequence of that illusion. The culprit lies elsewhere, in the captain's apparent lack of understanding about the 737's trim system. You see, every pilot starts his or her career on small aircraft. There, the aerodynamic forces directly push onto the flight control surfaces and the pilot has to fight them with pure muscle strength. If the aircraft is out of trim, let's say a pilot has to push all the time to keep the plane on the intended flight path, he has to push the yoke forward and at the same time push the trim switches forward until the yoke no longer pushes back on his hand. Then, the aircraft is perfectly in trim. However, this approach would be impossible for larger airliners, since the forces acting on the control surfaces are far too great to be moved by hand. Therefore, these surfaces are controlled hydraulically. Since the pilot still needs to feel some resistance to simulate the forces of flight, an artificial feel unit is installed in airliners such as the 737. These provide a force feedback that becomes larger as the control input becomes larger. And here lies the crucial point. The artificial feel unit does not represent an accurate feedback regarding an out-of-trim situation. It merely provides the pilot with a feedback that he is pushing on the control column quite strongly, therefore deflecting the elevator by quite a lot. Now, contrary to light aircraft, if one wants to trim away a constant pushing force on the yoke in the 737, one should push the yoke forward to stabilize the flight path, start trimming forward and gradually release the control column to the neutral position as the required elevator deflection to maintain a stable flight path is released. The committee concluded that, since the captain apparently was not mentally ready for the go-around, he became overwhelmed by the tasks coming at him the moment he initiated the maneuver. During his state of strong stress, he most probably reverted to something he had learned long ago, trim the nose down until the yoke no longer pushes back against his hand. However, due to the system design of the artificial feel unit on the 737, that moment never came since the system only provides a feedback force on how strongly he was pushing against the yoke, not how much out of trim the aircraft was. As to why the first officer did not react or intervene earlier, 
A note made by an instructor during a training session might shine a light on that. It reads, First officer needs to be quite a bit more assertive in what is needed from the captain. Tell him what you want done and do not wait for the captain to inquire with you or direct you in this regard. One can therefore assume that the first officer was rather timid in his style of intervention. You see, in the end this accident was more complex than I thought. I once again apologize for the mistakes in the first video and I hope I could shine a light on the matter now. I would also like to clarify that I am only rated on Airbus aircraft, formerly the A320 and now the A330, and therefore it is sometimes a bit more difficult for me to make reports about Boeing aircraft, since I don't have a similar expertise on these planes. Special thanks to Admiral Klauberg, who, as I found out, has a great blog where he writes about aircraft accidents. Check him out if you like, I'll leave a link in the description. That said, thank you very much for watching, again. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any future episodes. See you next week.